Hello everyone, it's Greg from the Plastic Crap Blog and today I'm here to review the Adepticon 2019 releases that we saw in the seminar. Um, so there were some interesting things that came out and I am not necessarily overwhelmed by all of it but that's predominantly because they're not in the armies that I play. However, there were some really interesting things that came out such as the big black M was revealed uh, among some other things. So... Um, Welcome if you're joining the stream with us now, and uh, let's dive in. So the first thing that was kind of showcased um, was Aristea, and I suppose I'm not necessarily that bothered about Aristea. Um, I don't play it myself. However, I think that there are some really cool miniatures, and it's quite nice to see that they're now coming over into... Um, they're now coming over into Infinity. Uh, this first miniature that they showed was really interesting, um, I thought, because they clearly have taken some inspiration from Full Metal Alchemist, and I think it is just phenomenal. This is the type of miniature that I would be interested in buying, even if I didn't play the game. Um, the paint scheme on this is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, I really, really like it. Um, it just works. It looks so cool. Um, and I like the idea of someone little sort of on top, um, sort of powering this little guy or, or at least commanding it. And I guess that's very anime sort of inspired. But it's just it's just awesome. I really, really like it. And I, I would definitely consider getting the full metal Cosmo. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. Um, moving forward, though, uh, is the next Diaphos mission pack coming out. And I suppose uh, when I interviewed Bostria the other week, he hinted that another Diaphos was coming out and that they will continue to do so. And we've got this one called Nocturne. Um, again, I'm not necessarily overwhelmed by it because we've already had Nauf come out before and uh, it's just a slightly different pose. Um, I think the Civi in this one's quite interesting though because she looks like she works in Apple. Um, it's a strange mini with the, with the shorts, although I think it's a good mini regardless. Um, I think it's quite nice. Um, I don't know if I'd have it, although I think it's always quite good useful uh, now that we're needing more and more uh, HPTs and civilians within our games um, to, to have these nice different options. And then we've got this other guy who looks like he's from Hackerslam, and I can't for the life of me remember who or what he is um he looks quite cool though uh he's got very very sharp features and a top knot um i'm not genuinely not sure what he is although he looks as though he's wearing kind of the armor to go into the anaconda because if you see on his uh on his stomach it looks like he's got those sort of those lock-in pads um to be able to go into a tag so he could even maybe be something to do with Drews, but I am just speculating largely here and I don't actually know. Um, so, where we go forward then? So, uh, the Imandino probably is one of my favourite things to have come out of this, um, the entirety of the seminar, to be honest. Um, Imandinos are fantastic if you've never played them. Um, they're super cheap, so I would normally go for the boarding shotgun version. Uh, boarding shotgun the chain rifle version is because i'm looking at it uh the chain rifle version which i think is just better for points you can get some really interesting things from the booty roll so you don't need to be spending the points to to have an upgraded weapon um i think it's just a phenomenal sculpt though um i'd be interested to see just how tall that tactical briefcase is um and interestingly as we go through all of the images of today you'll notice that um i think in every single pack um, there is a tactical rock or a tactical uh, piece of equipment that people are standing on. So it seems like they're very much using that to enable more and different interesting poses. Um, I'm not necessarily against it myself, but I think it can mess up your bases if you've got a certain base style, um, which can be a little bit difficult. But overall, I think this, this person is a phenomenal sculpt, um, and I would definitely buy it even though i'm more likely to use the chain rifle version that's how much i like it i think when they did or redid the ermandinos they 
the level of quality it just really showed when you looked at the older ones um the digital sculpting just really showed it off so yeah fantastic fantastic mini and i'm really excited for it then we've got dynamo um if i'm honest with you i originally thought that dynamo was a one-off i thought dynamo uh was some sort of special character that would be played um when actually it turns out you can have up to five of them in tack so it gives tack the option to be able to um do a bike list although i'm not necessarily sure why you would um i was trying to think of a place for this guy uh before i came on stream and i suppose one really interesting thing about him is that he's got the the mine dispenser and i think you've got some good possibilities with the mine dispenser however if you're using him to run eight inches up and then drop a mine to try and clear all the separate or sort of dominate all the sort of entry points to your side of the table i don't understand in an army full of infiltrating camo with uh, mine layer why you do that um it's quite nice because i think for i think it's something like 23 points or 29 points you can get an 8-4 specialist um so that's quite useful to be zipping about and um pushing buttons but realistically i probably wouldn't buy him just for the mind dispenser also interestingly i dislike the fact that so he's a specialist operative anyway but if you want the forward observer or the paramedic i believe you're playing one swc and granted he gets a boarding shotgun or a molotov but i'd much rather have the submachine gun because i'm pretty sure with that kind of movement you're going to get into the zones you want um submachine guns i think are very much overrated with the fact that they can go into suppressive fire you can get a nice ap shock um i think they're great um but I don't necessarily think Dynamo would be my first choice in building an army. But again, it gives you some nice options. I'm quite sure as well you get a light smoke launcher, um, which is always useful um, within that faction. So what have we got coming up next? The Arjuna. Um, I don't necessarily think there's anything exciting about the Arjuna itself. Um, for the amount of points that you're paying, I think you can do it um, better in different ways. So I think if you're taking the Arjuna, um, who is, a, you know, it looks like a, it's going to be a really nice sculpt coming out of it. Um, it's cool because it's got the D charger so you can do some of the missions. Um, but I think if you're taking it, you're taking it solely for the reason of having um, the Kirin bots with it. So. I don't understand why you wouldn't pay at least four points for one. I'd probably go with two of them um, because I think if you're taking this unit, you're going for the cyber mines and the Emirat. So trying to isolate people or, you know, uh, using the cyber mines to, to inflict wounds, I think is how they work. Um, I think that's why you'd be taking this unit, not because of the specialist option. Um, I would probably want the shock marksman version again keeping it low on swick i think with o4s that you're going to use up your swc very quickly in other places so i would probably go for the shock marksman rifle which i think is underrated um shock is fantastic um and we're seeing a lot more of it and it's uh yeah i think it's great so there's the carrying bots um I think it needs to be a little bit hard to tell from Dakinis, if I'm honest, um, in terms of the way that they look. But I think they're really nice. Um, I suppose you probably paint them differently. Um, I think all of the new bots that are coming out for O4S, that new Dakini box, they, they just looked fantastic. Um, so I'm really, really happy with them. But again, as I sort of said at the beginning of the video, I'm not thrilled or I'm not sort of basing all my hopes upon this. Then we've got the Namur. So um, I guess, I don't know. I'm not too sure about this. So in terms of the concept art, I think he looks quite cool. Um, I never realized just how bizarre Hacker's Lamb Spitfires were. Um, I think that's something that's quite interesting in itself in comparison to the, the other units um, that you see in, in different armies. Um, the 
if we go into the actual sculpt so you've got the female one which is just phenomenal um it's such a dynamic pose i really really like it um yeah there's there's just nothing not to like about this um what i think i like about the use of the tactical rock in this one is that she's propelling herself forward as opposed to sort of just a leg up and, and just standing on it so um i think they are pretty expensive but you are paying for so many skills that you get with this um, i think it's got infiltration climbing plus it's a specialist operative um, so straight out of the bat it's got loads and it's going to be even more powerful by the fact that you've got total immunity um, so your bts3 you're going to then be able to use against normal uh, ammo as opposed to your armor of two which i think is good the only downside about this thing is um the numbers are very very expensive so these are popping in at about i think it's 44 points um you can duo them but i think the way that i expect them to be used is you will have them um you'll have them in a core of gulams and i think it will replace one of those i think that's probably the way to do it you get a slightly better bs um, and then you can use all of its skills to get across. Um, I think if I'm right in thinking this is the right unit, it also has auto med kit, although I might be thinking of the um, of the Zensha down, uh, say Den down the line, which I think I am. But yeah, fantastic, fantastic sculpt, and I'm really excited to be seeing it come out. Um, I think it's just such a good toolkit. People will be definitely using them, definitely. More Hackerslam uh, along the way. There was quite a lot of Hackerslam. So I think everyone was really geared up for Rama before um, before Adepticon. And then out of nowhere, Spiral Corpse came, Deshaq came, um, Foreign uh, Company came. And everyone was kind of just ready for Rama. Um, so it was quite surprising to see not that much showcase. You know, we had the Courage come out recently. But there wasn't much for the Hackers Land players until the Adepticon seminar. Um, and you've got the side N intervention troops. So these guys are one of your options for making a reasonably expensive um, core team. Um, I think if you. I'm trying to think of the base points. Um, I think if you use them all, you, you're going to be using sort of like at least sort of 200 points of your of your army, which is quite a lot. Um, it's almost like an SWC box as well. I thought that was a heavy rocket launcher just because of the way it was made, but that's definitely a missile launcher upon having checked. Um, you've got sort of um, shotguns and uh, I think Molotox, I might be wrong. Um, so... I think it's an okay box. Just having a look at the miniatures themselves, we've got a lovely tactical rock. Um, and I suppose we've got all these coats, and I think they've got mimetism. I could be wrong again. Uh, this isn't a faction that I play. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not overly keen on the, um, overly keen on them. Um, I think they're okay. I think the helmets are very much in line with, with Hacker's Lamb, but the coats are just, I'm not really like it. They just look like raincoats. Um, looking at this one here, um, I don't think they're appealing. They're not bad, but they're just not something that makes me, makes me go, wow. Um, then we have the Zensha. So the Zensha is for uh, Imperial Army. And has a massive, massive tactical rock. Um, and I was surprised. I was surprised at the, the fact that a, a hacker came out first. So I think everyone's probably going to be using the um, Tabashinga version. You've got um, camo and you can infiltrate. Um, obviously, it's got camo because it's got a tactical poncho. And I think I've mentioned in previous. Um, previous videos that I'm not a fan of the tactical ponchos um, I was wondering because of this boarding shotgun hacker version which you're playing 0.5 SWC for and seven more points whether 
Corvus Belly are bringing out the options that we like least first so that we buy the model because we need the model to play the profile and proxy it and then give us the actual one that we're most likely to use following that. So they did that with the Dao Ying and I'm wondering whether they're doing that with this. Um, I think it's a nice miniature. Um, I know people have had different thoughts on the the lines. Um, there's a, another miniature that has the lines on his, on his uh, shoulder pads. Um, and this guy's got it on his helmet as well. I really like them. I like the, the texture it adds. Um, I think it's much better for us poor sculptors. I know that some people like to be able to do their freehand on it. And it's probably harder to make it um, NMM highlight. However, we have a lot of miniatures that have just like plain surfaces. So I really like it. I think it's interesting that the tactical poncho has a gap for it, showing just how much they wanted to add it into, into the sculpt. It's an interesting helmet as well. It's got some sort of like rebreather on it. Um, which is pretty cool. Okay, then we've got Crit Corman um, for the Invincible Zhu Yongs. Now, I couldn't find the profile on Army, so I'm assuming that this guy is completely new. Um, I think it's a great sculpt, though. Um, I mean, what person with... Is that four handguns or three handguns wouldn't be awesome? Um, so it looks like it's got Breaker Pistol. Um... And he's just absolutely packing. Uh, I like the man bun on him. And I might be a little bit biased towards that. But I like the man bun. Um, I like that his armor comes up to his neck. He looks a little bit like... Um, a little bit like the walking version of the Shu Jian. Um, but really, really nice miniature. Um, I think he looks fantastic. And I would I would buy him on, my, on his own, to be honest. Um, I really, really like it. But I'd be interested to see what it does. So they don't have a hacker... Um, in there, so I was wondering if because he hasn't got any main gun strapped to him, whether he might be a hacker because there's something around the back of his head there um, so I wasn't sure whether that would be making him more down that profile or whether he's just going to be a plain specialist as we've already seen um, today with other things Then we've got Patsy Garnett. Patsy, um, I think we're you know we're expecting Patsy. Um, it's an interesting pose. Uh, I quite like that she's throwing the grenade. Um, not too sure what she's doing with her gun. I'm trying to think how you might hold if you were going to throw it. Probably not that way. Um, however, I quite like the fact that her face mask is up. Uh, it's easily definable as a character, which I thought. Um, until later down the line you'll see the orcs uh another orc female is doing the same thing so let's go have a look at that so yeah i mean patsy's we've been in special for a while she's interesting because she's got nco um i think that's a very useful skill the model's very nice um just standard i think standard what we'd expect from Corvus belly nothing too amazing nothing too uh nothing that's not very good about excuse me not very good about it this is probably one of my least favourite boxes from the um, all of, of the Adepticon, really. Um, just looking at it, I suppose, I thought that Patsy might be the only one that had the visor up. Um, I think it might have made a bit more, it might have been a bit more of a sound choice in terms of distinguishing from the uh, the normal Orcs. Uh, but it's nice to see that these are getting a re-sculpt. However, I absolutely hate the picture of the Orc in the middle. Um, I think the pose looks absolutely ridiculous. I realise he's doing a halt, um, but with his leg up on the tactical rock, he looks like he's doing walk like the Egyptian. It looks awful. Um, I'm really not keen on it, but I know people are going to want to use it because the HMG is just a necessary tool within that core. Um, so I'm really disappointed in that one, unfortunately. Um, a few people have also highlighted, which I think quite funny, on the uh, on his groin you have an interesting extended uh, armour plating, which I think is funny. 
and then you've got the little tin bot um, which the head looks a little bit unproportionately sized for it um, so not sure if that will come out a little bit different but it looks a bit strange from here um, I'm just thinking it's probably going to be he's with the guy in the middle so I'm trying to think what tin bot it could be he looks like a sort of a deflector uh, or the shield one so perhaps it gives him plus uh, plus armor right then we're on to the Takima schema uh, I'm happy and I'm excited about this one I really want this in a tricore I think having a five man bonus to a viral sniper is just ridiculously good because I enjoy using the Nikul so much um, a lot of people have made comments about his MSV2 goggles uh, we often go on, on goggles being the defining factor of MSV level 2 and uh, this guy's just about to go ready for snowboarding um, however I did have a thought earlier about perhaps maybe the defining factor for Toha being able to do MSV or not is their ability to sense pheromones um, picking up that something is around rather than physically having to see it uh, which might, buy, might be why he hasn't got um, I don't know some some sort of visual aid. I really like the pose. I like that his cape's coming, and I just hope it's better uh, put together than the old Clipsos cape because that was horrendous. Um, but really nice. I'll definitely be picking up one of these. Um, again, interesting that you've used different tactical elements on the base to to change the pose. Um, he looks like he's standing on top of like a building or something and shooting down from it um, but yeah really really nice really excited um, I'm interested on the thing on his pauldrons and uh, there's one here that's not something you see on Toha which clearly defines him I suppose his spiral it looks a little bit different uh, different style there's some some sticking up there um, so I'd be interested to see what they actually are rather than just texture for the miniature um, See, it'd be nice to see how they're painted up. Right. The exciting bit, some speculation. So, um, it was released. The big black M was, was released at uh, Adepticon 2019. And it was we were told that it's going to be a dungeon crawler um, by the same team that made Aristea. So, everyone was pretty hyped for this because uh, dungeon crawlers sound awesome. Um, with infinity rules it should be cool and Carlos announced that we would get metal miniatures rather than plastic miniatures way um, I think everyone's buzzing about that because you could definitely tell the difference in the quality between uh, the Aristea miniatures and the infinity miniatures um, he also mentioned that they would be doing in-house but because of the large volume of miniatures needed it would be going to Kickstarter which I think some people weren't too happy about Carlos promised that it wouldn't delay the shipping of it. Um, it was just because they needed it to get such a large project off the ground, which I thought was strange, um, but fair. I'm surprised that they wouldn't just do a pre-order system on their website uh, and share the profits um, with someone else. So uh, I'm not really sure why they've done Kickstarter, but if it works, it works. Other big companies are doing it, um, and that's just what you have to do. So... One thing I'd be really disappointed of is that it, um, it is heroes from the human sphere have gone to fight the combined army. Um, and Carlos mentioned that this could be one way of getting some Shazvasti miniatures. I'd be really disappointed if it is the only way to get particular Shazvasti miniatures. Um, I realize that the games integrate. You see that with, I think it's Foreign Company now, have that sort of the link of, of uh, named characters from Aristea. But I don't think that should be a way of doing it. I think you should be able to purchase them anyway, if that's the case, because that would just suck. Um, that would just suck. So I'll be interested to see, one, how much it costs, and just, just see what miniatures are in it, because it sounds like there's going to be a butt ton, um, which I suppose you need for a dungeon crawler. So there'll be a lot of nice combined army miniatures in there. I think it would be hilarious if they use this as an opportunity to redo the Gakis and Praetors that everyone really wants them redoing um, so we will see so 
Let's have another sip. Um, so let's think about then this uh, picture here. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing piece of artwork. Um, I think it looks great. It almost looks as though the spaceship has dropped them off and they are in some sort of, it reminds me of Halo for some reason. Uh, they're here ready to kick some ass. Um, and these are the heroes for Defiance. Probably going to be the first four, as I imagine they'll do some releases. And uh, Carlos said, let the speculation begin. So I'm going to speculate a little bit on who is who or what. Um, some of it easier than others to work out. So let's go from left to right. So the um, person on the left, uh, to me, after having done a little bit of re research, uh, is definitely from Pano, uh, I think. Um, mainly because of the helmet. I think that's the easiest way to tell. Um, and if you look carefully uh, down here, you can see that she's wearing some sort of, or I assume she, because of the the, uh, the body proportions of wider hips. Um, it looks as though it's a Magister Knight or a Bagmari. I don't think it's a Nisse. Um, so I'd probably be leaning towards a Magister Knight. I think that makes a bit more sense. Um, I can't tell what that weapon is. No, I can't tell. I can't tell. Just sort of just having a look. I was going to throw a guess out, but I can't tell. So I think the first one there is a uh, is a Magister Knight. Uh, and it, I reckon that all of these would be individual characters, obviously. Um, but I think it's a Magister Knight profile. Or that's where they come from. Then this person in the back, I originally thought was a Nomad Hacker. Uh, they're unarmed, um, as far as we can see. Apart from this tiny little cubey thing here um, so to me that kind of makes sense that it might be a nomad hacker uh, and you can also see that there are tints there's tints of blue tints of red um, however the skin looks very pale I suppose the skin's pale on all of them I did wonder about whether it might be a Deva functionary because I can't imagine that you're not going to have a Alef model going to fight the combined kind of what it's all about isn't it so I'd be surprised if there isn't one in here. So it could be a Deva functionary with that long hair that's not so ridiculously stuck out in this picture um, with a bit more texture. So um, I also think that could be the case because of if you look at this kind of bodice, um, that very much looks like the, the, mon the miniature itself. Um, so could be that, could be that. But then the kind of... Um, the baggy trousers makes me think it's Nomad. So I'm undecided on that one. Moving one along, we've got uh, this hulking big guy. Um, when I zoom in and I look really, really closely, it looks as though there are tints of yellow here. And that makes me think about Yu Jing. Um, he's got that kind of, there's armor plates and then the centers here, which look like, um, which looks like Wu Ming armor. Um, the only thing that doesn't add up is his glowing chest. Um, I think even his bold head looks like the bold Wu Ming. Um, but his weapon doesn't stack up. Um, so I'm not sure. I thought that could be a Wu Ming with a HMG fed AP HMG. Uh, looking, it does also look like it'd be the wrong color scheme. But it also looks like a Azrael. Um, it's got the same body. It's missing the shield, but it's definitely got the same side-mounted um, APHMG. So that could also be a possibility. Um, but the yellow made me think it was a bit more Yuzhing-like. And then last but not least, we've got the, um, which is very clearly, a Scott. Um, I think you can tell that because of his beard. If you zoom in very, very closely, you've got a symbol here. Um, which you can't see on stream and a little bit of tints of blue here which um, make me think about those uh, the Scots that cover themselves in blue um, and he's got these uh, big old close combat loveliness uh, swords so I definitely think he's Scottish um, what do you guys think I would love to hear your thoughts on it um, I'm pretty sure I've got two of them right um, if you think you can top three add it in the comments below and uh, we'll uh, we'll try and work this out before it's released but I'll be excited to see 
when it comes out and um I'm 50-50 on dropping a load of money on it because I didn't on Aristea. I probably wouldn't use Aristea. This, though, I could certainly, certainly be tempted. Uh, let me know what your thoughts were in regards to your favourite piece from Adepticon 2019. And I will catch up with you guys soon. Thank you.